title screen, pause menus, win screens. They seem like such small aspects of video games, yet every game needs them, and they can be surprisingly difficult to set up if you don't know how to code. So today, I'm gonna teach you how to do it, and we're gonna use an AI app called Cursor to do the coding for us. Before we continue, this tutorial picks up from a previous tutorial, which you can find by clicking on the card above, but I'm gonna show you what you need to get started, just in case. Download and install Unity and Cursor. Unity is the game engine we're gonna use to build the game, and Cursor is the AI app we're gonna use to write the code for us. Now, in Unity, we're going to set Cursor as the external script editor, so go over to Edit, Preferences, then click on the External Tools panel, and then right next to External Script Editor, select Cursor. You might have to browse for it, but it should be where you installed it, which should be under Program Files and Cursor. Set up a Unity scene with a working first-person controller, an environment with colliders, and jack-o'-lanterns you want the player to collect. Okay, now we're going to design the UI for these screens, the title screen, pause screen, and wind screen. And we'll start by gathering all of the assets we're going to need for them. You'll need a background image or video for your title screen. I'll be using this weird stock footage of this jack-o'-lantern. And some cool fonts. One for the title, one for the on-screen overlay during the game, and one for everything else. And that's it. You don't need the fonts as a disclaimer, it's just uh, my suggestion to add more variation to your game. But if you do choose to use them, here's how to make the fonts usable on Unity UIs. Simply drag your font file into Unity, then go up to Window, Text Mesh Pro, and then select the Font Asset Creator. Then you literally just drag the font that you want into the Source Font box. Select Generate Font Atlas, and once it completes, Save your font asset into your fonts folder right next to your fonts for easy access. For your background, choose anything you'd like, but I'd recommend using something consistent with the vibe of your game. That's why I chose this jack-o'-lantern video. Also, whether it's an image or a video, just make sure it's good quality because this will be the first thing that the player sees when they open up your game. Next, we gotta make the things. No coding yet, so relax. Let's start with the pause menu, then the end screen. We'll do the title screen last, and you'll see why in a minute. First, we have to create what are called canvases in Unity, which are basically like containers for your on-screen UI. With your scene open, right-click the hierarchy, UI, canvas, and rename it to pause menu UI. Next, right-click on the pause menu UI, go to UI again, and then panel. This will just be the shape behind your pause menu buttons, making them easier to read. By the way, you might notice that I have the game tab open rather than the scene. That allows me to see the UI changes as I would see them in the game as I'm making them. I expand the scale of the panel in the inspector to fill the screen, make it a solid color, and then lower the opacity. Speaking of buttons, go ahead and right click on the pause menu UI again, go to UI, and then select button, text mesh pro, and then name it resume game button. Duplicate that button and then rename the duplicate main menu button. These will be, well, these will be your buttons. First, let's make our resume button. And what you may notice when you create the buttons is that they automatically create both the button and the text that goes on the button. So let's go ahead and expand the resume game button in the hierarchy and click on that text element it created. In the inspector on the right, under text input, just type in resume. Right below that box you type in, you'll see the font asset box. This is where you'll drop that font asset I showed you how to make earlier. But if you didn't feel like doing that, then you can just use the default font that Unity gives you. Under that, feel free to make any changes that make sense to you. Now do the same thing with the main menu button, only obviously change the text to main menu. This is going to be the button that returns you to the title screen. Now for the final touch on the pause screen, right click the pause menu UI again, go to UI, and then text mesh pro. And then just type pause. Now just position your buttons and your text in a way that makes sense to you. This is how I did it. Next, untick this checkbox from the pause menu UI to disable it by default, and let's move on. Next, we're going to create the end screen that pops up when you win the game. I'll make this way easier on us. No buttons. Just a panel and three text mesh pro thingies. So let's create another canvas by right clicking on the hierarchy, selecting UI, and then once again, canvas. This we'll call windscreen UI. I put the panel behind the text as an almost fully opaque black box. This time I decided not to fill the whole screen. In the first text, I typed congratulations, gave it a big Futura font, and positioned it at the top of the canvas. Then I have another text mesh pro element right below it that says you survived in the font I used for the title. Then at the very bottom is a prompt that just says press space to return to title. I mean, who needs on-screen buttons when you've got a giant keyboard in front of you? Position and customize these elements to your liking. Tick the button next to windscreen UI to disable it by default and let's move on. Now we'll make the title screen. For this, we're gonna create a whole new scene. And now you understand why we did this last. So find your scenes folder in your assets. Right click in that folder, go to create, scene, and scene. 
Name this new scene title screen, and while you're at it, name your original scene game if you haven't already. Then double click on the new title screen scene. So by now, you're a pro at making UI canvases, and this is gonna be exactly the same. Right click hierarchy, UI, and canvas and then name it title screen UI. Under that canvas, you'll create two text mesh pro elements and one raw image one. Rename the raw image background video. With it selected in the inspector, add a component video player. Select your render mode to render texture. Under video clip, you're gonna drag the video you downloaded earlier to be your background. Check loop and check play on awake. Now in the folder next to the video file you're using for your background, right click, create render texture and name it background video RT. Now under the video, set the target texture to that render texture. Now do the same under raw image and texture. Now if your experience is anything like mine, you'll likely end up with your background video being a tiny little square. Now bear with me because I had to figure this out myself, but this is what you have to do to fix it. In your background video, select native size. Now you know how these things go, it can never be that easy, so your background video is likely now off center. To fix it, we're going to scroll all the way up to where it says stretch, select this so that it stretches to the screen, then literally just zero out the position. And now you have a background. And speaking of backgrounds, there's a train in my background, so I'm going to take a small break. Now that you have a background, set up your title in front of it, nice and big with the font of your choice. Now in your other text element, put the words, press any button to continue. And again, set it up the way you like. All right, now from here you pretty much have your game all set up. Now all that's left is to ask Cursor to do the code for us, which is basically going to bridge the gap between our UI design and our game. First, we're going to want to index our game folders. This just means allowing Cursor to sort through your folders and make sure your game has everything it needs. So open up Cursor, tick the toggle AI pane, then copy your project's path in the Windows Explorer, paste it in the chat box, and type this beneath it. Now that we have those folders indexed and ready to go, it's time to let Cursor program our title screen, pause screen, and windscreen. I prompted it like this. I'll leave the prompt in the description for you to reference. From here, literally just sit back and watch Cursor work its magic as it produces all of the scripts you need right in front of you and even lays out all the steps you need to follow to make it work. So I'll follow it step by step. First, go to your title screen, select the title screen UI in the hierarchy, and add component title screen controller which is a script cursor made. Then go to your game scene, right click the hierarchy and select create empty and call it game manager. We already did this so no need to do that. Just add a component to your current game manager and then select the pause menu script. Once you've added that script, you should see some options right beneath it. Here, link your pause menu with the pause menu canvas. Then link the resume game button and the main menu button right here as well. Time for your windscreen. Add the windscreen controller script that cursor made to your windscreen UI game object. Then go back to your game manager and drag and drop the windscreen UI into the box under your pumpkin collection manager script that says windscreen canvas. Save your progress, then go over to your title screen scene again and press play. Since this is where your game will begin, you have to press play from here in order to get it to work properly. Once you press play, you should see your beautiful new title screen, and it should prompt you to press any button to continue. This will take you over to your game scene, where you can test out your pause button by pressing escape. And once you've tinkered with it and ensured your buttons work, collect all of the jack-o'-lanterns in your scene. Once you finish collecting them, your windscreen should pop up. Press the space bar, and if it takes you back to your title screen, congrats! We've now passed the coding part. Give yourself a big old pat on the back. Or better yet, why don't you tap the top of your computer screen because it kind of did all the hard work. All right, from here you're gonna wanna share it with your friends and you can do that by uploading your game to viverse.com. We actually have a whole tutorial on how to do that, so you should probably check that out because it's super easy. Especially considering you literally get to share and play your game with your friends for free. Once you've uploaded your game to Viverse, you'll get a URL to share with others, so go ahead and drop yours in the comments below because I would love to see how your game turned out. And while you're down there sharing your games, remember to like this video and subscribe to Viverse because you're not gonna wanna miss our next tutorial.